Hey, and welcome back to Wild Mythology, the channel where we discover the mysteries of myth, folklore, and legends. As always, I welcome you to the channel with bread and salt. Today, we'll be describing some of the mythical creatures and monsters from Jewish, Christian, and Islamic folklore. But before we get started, make sure to subscribe for more awesome mythology videos in the future. With that being said, sit back and relax and get ready for some wild mythology. The Nephilim were the half-human, half-angel children of the Watchers, angels who were originally sent by God to watch over and properly instruct humanity, but fell to their sins and desires. After marrying and impregnating human women, these wives of the Watchers eventually gave birth to the Nephilim, who were described as great giants with amazing strength and sinful intentions. As the Nephilim grew up, they started spreading through the lands, devouring crops and humanity. But soon, all of this destruction came to the attention of the heavens. The souls of those that the Nephilim had killed cried at the gates of heaven, catching the attention of Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Uriel, four of the seven mighty archangels. Hearing what had been happening on Earth, the four angels rushed to God and asked what was to be done about the out-of-control Nephilim. But before God could answer, the prophet Enoch spoke out and petitioned God to show mercy and allow the Nephilim a second chance to repent their actions. God agreed and so sent dreams to the Nephilim, warning them of endless rain and a humongous wave. Enoch himself even spoke with one of the Nephilim, warning them of God's punishment if they did not repent. But when the Nephilim met in council, they decided that they'd rather live in defiance than follow the rules of God. Hearing this, God ordered Gabriel to cause the Nephilim to fight each other, ensuring that many of the giants would die. Following Gabriel, Michael was ordered to round up the Watchers and force them to watch as their Nephilim children killed each other, in punishment for their sins and bringing them into the world. After this, many of the Nephilim were dead, and the rest were drowned when God sent the Great Flood onto the earth. Supposedly, only one of the Nephilim lived after the Flood. This Nephilim was named Onuk, who would become the ancestor of Goliath, the great giant that faced off against David. The Leviathan is a great sea serpent and one of the three great beasts who at the end of time will have a great battle with God as they try to destroy the Almighty. The Leviathan was created by God at the beginning of creation and is described as a female creature that is 300 miles long from head to tail, made from the parts of whales, crocodiles, snakes, and sharks. It has impenetrable scales, the ability to breathe fire, and an imposing presence that sucks out human hope. It's said to make its home in the deep depths of the ocean. Originally, God created both a male and female pair, but God realized that if the two sea serpents had children, there would soon be no other living creatures left in the world. So God killed the male, leaving only the soul of Iathan. The behemoth is the second great creature that God created at the beginning of creation. The behemoth is described as a male land creature that stands thousands of feet tall, living in an invisible desert to the east of the Garden of Eden. The behemoth is said to be physically the strongest creature on Earth, and at the peak of the summer solstice, the great beast will let out a humongous roar that will echo throughout the Earth. Every creature will hear it and be reminded that they are nowhere close to being the apex predator on the planet, causing them to be less wild. In the book of Job, the behemoth is said to eat grass, have bones tougher than bronze, and a tail that stands up taller than any cedar tree. The Ziz is the third and final creature God created at the beginning of creation. The Ziz is described as a giant griffin-like bird with wings so big they can black out the sun. The Ziz is said to be around the same size as the Leviathan and the Behemoth, with one description saying that when the Ziz stood in the ocean, only its feet were covered by water. According to legend, the Ziz once threw away one of its eggs because it was rotten. When it cracked onto the ground, the fluids from within it flooded 60 cities and destroyed 300 cedar trees. 
Aziz is also known to have the best eyesight and the loveliest voice of any creature. According to legend, at the end of time, the Leviathan will team up with the Behemoth and the Ziz, and they will try together to destroy God, their creator. The Almighty will face all three with his sword drawn and slay them. God will then take their bodies and use their meat to feed the righteous and their skin to shelter them at the end of time. A golem is a soulless animated human-like doll that follows the orders of whomever awakens it. In order to create a golem, one must shape it out of an inanimate substance such as mud or clay. Once the golem is shaped, the creator must walk around the figure seven times while chanting secret words. After that, they must take a piece of paper and write a shem upon it, which is one of the secret holy names of God. They then must place this piece of paper inside the golem's mouth. Once this happens, the golem activates and can be commanded. A golem has great strength and can only be killed if the sacred piece of paper keeping it active is destroyed. While golems are usually unable to speak and lack intelligence, there have been legends where a golem gains consciousness and has even fallen in love. To deactivate a golem, one must remove the sacred piece of paper from its mouth. According to legend, a golem must always be deactivated on the day of the Sabbath so it can rest. If it isn't deactivated, the golem will rage out of control and start spreading destruction. Not even its master's orders will stop the doll. Jinn are shape-shifting creatures that naturally live for thousands of years originating from Arabic and Islamic folklore. In modern times, jinn are known as genies and have the ability to grant wishes to those who find their magic lamps. Like humans, jinns are of God's creation, said to be created before Adam and Eve. However, unlike humans who were made from clay, dirt, and dust, jinns were made of smokeless fire. This is supposedly why they have an extraordinary set of abilities, such as invisibility, flight, human possession, and shape-shifting that can range from humans to animals to a large, smoky figure. A jinn's true form is always invisible when perceived by human eyes, so a jinn must shapeshift into a different form in the rare occurrence it shows itself to a human. Another difference from humans is that jinns live in a separate realm that is between the earthly realm and the celestial realm. In this separate realm, they are said to live in different tribes. Like humans, jinns have the freedom of free will, meaning that while some jinns are benevolent, others can be evil. Good jinns might become friends or advisors to humans. They might also even engage in sexual affairs with humans, resulting in children that have seer abilities. Evil jinns, also called Afrits or Ifrits, might possess humans, causing them to harm others or even themselves. There are even legends of evil witches or sorcerers summoning a jinn and sending them to cause harm to their enemies. Only an exorcism can release a jinn from a human, and supposedly wearing a charm or amulet with the name of God written upon it can protect you and repel evil jinns. In many modern stories, jinns, now more commonly known as genies, are creatures of great power that grant wishes to those who release them from their lamp. This common trope probably comes from the Arabian Nights, 1001 Nights, a collection of many Middle Eastern folk tales, including many involving a jinn. In the book of Samuel, Goliath was said to be a nine-foot giant that fought for the Philistine army against the Israelites in the Valley of Elah. Instead of charging the Israelites, Goliath challenged the Jews to send out a champion to face him in single combat. But the king of the Israelites, Saul, was too afraid to accept Goliath's challenge, and so forty days Goliath came twice each day in front of the Israelites and challenged them. Eventually, a young shepherd named David accepted Goliath's challenge and met the giant on the field. King Saul is said to have offered David his armor, but David declined, deciding to only bring his staff, his sling, and five stones to the battlefield. Goliath was said to be covered in his great armor and wield a giant javelin and sword. 
When the two confronted each other, Goliath insulted David, while David made a bold proclamation that he would slay the giant and give his body to the birds and beasts of the earth. Thus, the two faced off in a great battle, which ended when David used his sling to hurl a stone right into Goliath's forehead, knocking the giant off his feet. David then quickly advanced and cut off Goliath's head, causing the Philistine army to flee. Later, David brought Goliath's head to Jerusalem, which began David's journey into becoming the next king of the Israelites. As we mentioned when we talked about the Nephilim, in some legends Goliath was thought to be a descendant of Anak, the only Nephilim that survived the Great Flood. The Beast of Revelation is an interesting creature with the body of a leopard, the feet of a bear, and seven serpent-like necks, each with its own head that has the mouth of a lion. Spread out through its seven heads, the Beast of Revelation has a total of ten horns, each that wears its own crown. In Revelations chapter 13, verses 1 through 10, the Beast is said to rise out of the sea and meet with the dragon, aka Satan. As it goes to stand in front of Satan, it's noticed that one of its seven heads is heavily injured and dead-looking. Once in front of Satan, he gives the beast great power and the authority to attack the people of God for 42 months. After gaining Satan's power, the beast heals its slain head, which amazes the people of the world. Astonished with the beast's power, many people of Earth begin to worship it. Not soon after gaining Satan's powers, another beast emerges from out of the Earth, a beast described to have two horns like a lamb. This beast from the earth is a false prophet and convinces the people of the world to worship the beast of Revelation by performing great signs and making the people raise monuments in the beast's image. Once the monument is built, the false prophet will breathe life into it, making the monument come alive. The monument can then speak and tell the people to praise the beast, as well as spy on those who don't worship it. Over the next 42 months, the Beast of Revelation and the False Prophet rage war against God's saints and his people, trying to make every human desert God. Any that don't worship the Beast are put to death, and those that abandon God and truly worship the Beast of Revelation are marked on their right hand or forehead with the 6-6 mark of the Beast. After 42 months, the gates of heaven open and the Son of God leads heaven's armies against the beast of Revelation. In response, the beast and the false prophet prepare the armies of earth to go against heaven. But in the end, the beast of Revelation and the false prophet are defeated and thrown alive into the lake of fire. Succubus or succubi are female demons that receive sustenance by having sex with men. An incubus or incubi are the male counterparts of the succubi. Both types must absorb the life energy of their sexual partner in order to survive. A goal of both the succubi and the incubi is to have children with humans since they cannot have children with each other. In some legends, both species are able to reproduce with humans, while in others, they can't. In the legends where they can't, it's said that a succubus will collect semen from a human man and then give it to an incubus. The incubus will then corrupt the semen and later inject it into a human female. The result will be a cambion child, a child born of a demon and a human. These cambions will either have great power or will be horrifying, disfigured, and wicked. A famous example of a Cambian child is the wizard Merlin, who in some legends is the son of an incubus. As well as being dangerous in person, a strong succubus or incubus can invade and manipulate people's dreams. Both types of creatures are described as incredibly beautiful, with an enchanting allure that draws people in. The most famous succubus is Lilith, the first woman and wife of Adam. Unlike Eve, Lilith was made from the same dust as Adam. When Lilith was told that she was to be Adam's wife, she refused and left Adam to couple with Satan, which resulted in her becoming the mother of succubi. The Barak is a winged horse with a human head and was the mount for the prophet Muhammad during his night journey from Mecca to Jerusalem. 
Afterwards, in versions of the tale, the Barak lifted Muhammad to the seven heavens where Muhammad met with Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and eventually Allah. Barak is also said to have been the Mount of Abraham and would carry him back and forth from Canaan and Mecca each day and night. Solomon Shamir was a worm-like creature that could disintegrate or cut through almost any substance of the earth, such as stone, wood, diamond, and metals. Only lead could stand against the powers of the Shamir. According to legend, the Shamir was created on the eve of the Sabbath, before God finished creation. Solomon, wanting to build the first temple of Jerusalem, heard of the Shamir from the demon Asmodeus, who had been captured by Solomon. Finding out the location of the Shamir from the demon, Solomon sent his trusted friend and aide to go get it. When Solomon's friend returned, Solomon used the Shamir to shape the material used to construct the temple. It's said that Solomon also used the Shamir to engrave gemstones with mystical seals. Solomon then injected these marked gemstones with the Shamir's blood, causing them to have magical abilities. A Dibbik is a disembodied, malicious spirit that wanders restlessly until it finds and enters a person, attaching to their soul. A Dibbik is usually the spirit of a man who is not properly put to rest. According to legend, a Dibbik can only enter the body of someone who has sinned. Once attached to their victim's soul, a Dibbik can cause mental illness, can speak through its host's mouth, and sometimes can cleave a second personality into the host's mind, allowing the spirit to take control of the body. Mazakin are invisible demons that can cause minor harm to a person at any time through their daily lives. The Mazakin are described as having the wings of angels, the feet of a rooster, the ability to quickly travel through the air, and the ability to see slightly into the future. Like humans, they are able to procreate and die. Anytime a human is affected by slight harm, such as slipping, falling, or running into something, it is said to be the cause of the Mazakin. The only way to protect oneself of a Mazakin is to recite prayers before going to sleep. The only way to see a Mazakin is by burning some fur of a black cat and then spreading those ashes into your eyes. The Kalkidri are rainbow-colored angelic creatures that have 12 wings, the head of a crocodile, and the feet and tail of a lion. They are said to dwell around the sun and are known to circle around the earth bringing the star's heat with them. At sunrise, the Kalkadri are said to sing to each other, letting the birds of the world aware of the brand new day. And that's a wrap for today's adventure, fellow myth seekers. We hope you enjoyed our video today. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give the video a like. And with that, we'll see you next time on Wild Mythology.